In this module, we're going to continue our discussion of 2D phasor fields and in particular discuss how we use it, um, those fields to multiply and then integrate in order to calculate the 2D Fourier transform. So recall, um, these are the definitions of the forward and inverse Fourier transforms. And in the last module, we spent quite a bit of time looking at this term here, which we'll call the 2D phasor field. And so the recipe for the Fourier transform is essentially for every kx, ky combination, we want to calculate this, um, this phasor, which is a function of both x and y. Um, and um, so once we've specified kx and ky, this is now a function of x and y. Okay. So for example, we call this a phasor field that has a function of x and y um, at every given kx and ky location. So the next thing we do is we take our object and we multiply it by this um, phasor pattern. Um, and that's the next step in the process of computing the Fourier transform. Then we simply integrate that product over all um, of space. And, and that's how we do the Fourier transform. So the purpose of this module is to try to uh, look at this a little more carefully and, and, and present uh, some simple examples of what that process looks like. So just a reminder, these are sort of some examples of some 2D phasor fields or patterns. And in particular, let's review this one here. We have kx equals 0 0.25 and ky equals 0. So this means the period in the x direction is 4. And we note once again that that corresponds to the time, the space it takes for the phasor orientation to return back to um, the same, same orientation that has a period of 4. KY equals zero, so there's no variation. So as we move in the Y direction, you notice that along any column, the phasor orientations do not vary. So here we're using that phasor pattern here. So this is once again the KX equals 0 0.25, KY equals zero phasor pattern. It's a function of both X and Y. And we take, simply take that, multiply it by our object, then we integrate, and then that actually, the value of that integral is what we enter in as the value of the Fourier transform at, say, g of 0 0.25 comma 0. Okay. Here what we see is there's no variation in the x direction, so therefore kx must equal 0. There is variation in the uh, y direction, um, and it looks like the period here is going from here to here, so this must correspond to ky equals 0 0.25. Uh, we take that phasor pattern, we multiply it by our object, and then we integrate, and then we put it the value of that integral as the value of the Fourier transform at this location, so this would correspond to g of 0, 0, 0.25. So we repeat this process for every um, location in K space. And as you can see, that means that we have to take our object, multiply by a phasor pattern, and then enter it into the correct place in K space. So we can repeat this many, many times. Uh, here's one example um, where we have Kx equals 0, Ky equals 0. And we're assuming here, now what we're representing here is um, the multiplication of our object with the phasor pattern. And so here, wherever there's a circle, it indicates that the object has a um, value of, uh, of one. And so the multiplication of the object with the phasor has an amplitude of one. And so in this case, when we do the integration, instead of integrating, we'll obviously just sum up since this is a discrete example. And so in this case, what we'd say is the sum is equal to 25. So we'd say the Fourier transform at 0 comma 0 is equal to 25 for this object. And so the object, you can think of the underlying object here was just a number of ones, okay? Such that when we multiply the phasor pattern by the object, we got just back the phasor pattern itself. Now here's a slightly different example where now we're thinking of an object that is not all one. So it's going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 
0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is my object. So when I multiply by the phasor pattern, you notice that it basically, where the object is 0, there is no, um, the phasor amplitude is reduced to 0. And so um, it's not going to contribute to the sum. So now when we think about summing all this up, the sum is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 here. So for this object, g of 0, comma 0 equals 13. And so you can see that the, the answer I get is both a function of the phasor pattern, because in both cases I had kx, ky equals 0. It's a function of the phasor pattern, we multiply it by our object, and then we sum up um, that product. So let's take some uh, look at some more examples. Here, once again, I'm looking at kx equals 0, ky equals 0. This is exactly the example we just did. The vector sum is 25. And so here my object is all 1s. Now what we're doing is we're going to vary uh, kx equal to 0 0.25. We're going to keep ky equal 0. So now you can sort of see this corresponds to the period of 4 that we've talked about um, previously. And so this has a period of 4. Okay. And now what we think about is uh, what happens when we multiply uh, this object uh, by this um, uh, this phasor pattern. And since it's all 1s, we can simply multiply, multiplying by 1 does not do anything to the phasor pattern. So we can simply think about summing up all these arrows. And so we can do it either column by column or row by row, but let's do it column by column. So if we sum up the phasors from this column, it would give us minus 5. This would give us plus 5j. This would give us plus 5. This would give us minus 5j. And this would give us minus 5. So those are the column sums. And when we sum up over those column sums, the sum is minus 5. Okay? And so you see the amplitude here, we've gone down from 25 down to 5. And that sort of makes sense because this is a uniform optic. It's all 1s. And so it is not as a good of a match for this pattern here as it was a match for where all the phasers were. Uh, had no spatial variation. So this suggests that, you know, g of 0, 0, since my object is mainly uniform, has a higher amplitude than g of 0 0.250. 0. So that's, the amplitude of that is less than what it is at um, the center of k space. So this kx, ky equals 0 is often referred to as the center of k space.